In this tutorial video, I'm going to be explaining on how to configure WireGuard for mobile clients. Also, I want to ask my viewers, and I don't want to sound like I'm begging, but I would really appreciate it if you can subscribe to my YouTube channel. I love seeing this number go up every time I refresh it. And I also appreciate it if you can give a like to any of my videos. But anyway, let's get to it. So I want to explain the topology first. So in order to configure WireGuard, you kind of need to understand your network. Most of you people have single subnet. That's fine. And here I'm using a private internal IP address. It's perfectly fine for the demo, but I hope whoever is using PFSense in production has a public IP address from their internet provider. It doesn't have to be static. It has to be public. But in this case, I'm using an internal. But once again, I hope you're using public and you're not behind another NAT device, another router. But anyway, so the setup here is pretty basic. We have a server. Uh, the server or computer, it could be anything, computer service, something that has or serving a purpose. Maybe it's hosting a website, maybe it's running Windows remote desktop and you want to connect from it from your smartphone. So the smartphone could be the end device or the end user. In this case, we have smartphone. It could be anything. It could be an Android phone that is running WireGuard client. It could be a laptop that is running WireGuard client. It could be a desktop that is running WireGuard client. It could be anything that is running WireGuard client. So, so obviously the device, the end device needs to have internet access to the internet. And obviously your firewall, PFSense box, needs to have access to the internet. Once again, it doesn't matter how it gets internet as long as we have a public IP address. That's the most important thing. You need to have a public IP address on your interface. In this demo, once again, I'm kind of repeating myself here. I'm using internal. That's perfectly fine for the demo. And it doesn't matter how you get your internet access or how internet is delivered to your PFSense box. It could be a cable modem. It could be a DSL modem. It could be VDSL modem. It could be a medium converter. It could be a direct internet connection to your box through a fiber or just an ethernet cable. And obviously, most people will have will have a switch after their PFSense box because most cases PFSense uh, doesn't have does not have a switch, and it could be any kind of switch as long as the PFSense can ping to any of these systems on the network. So that is basically it for the network topology. Pretty basic, pretty easy to read. You know, we don't have anything fancy here. So next step is obviously the WireGuard or obviously PFSense. So here we have a fresh copy of PFSense freshly installed. And uh, depending on what distro you're using of PFSense or what version you're using, at this point I'm using version 2.5.2. And so if you don't have WireGuard here, obviously you're gonna have to install it and it's easy to install it. It's available as a package. So we're gonna go to available packages under package, package manager. We're gonna search for WireGuard and just to point out, right now WireGuard, it's an experimental package. Uh, just keep that in mind who I was using this. I am using this WireGuard in production and it's perfectly fine. I haven't run into any problems, but hopefully by the time WireGuard is not going to be experimental, it's going to be ready to go in production. So basically we're going to install it by clicking install, clicking confirm, depending how fast your system is. This might take a few minutes, this might take seconds. You want to look for the successful message here. So if you get this message, WireGuard is installed. Okay, so after installing uh, VPN WireGuard, you want to navigate to VPN, open up WireGuard, and we want to add a tunnel. So in order to configure this, I'm going to use this website right here called wireguardconfig.com. Pretty cool website. You can basically enter the variables you want your VPN tunnel to be configured as, and it generates these keys and these QR codes. So it makes it really easy for you to configure your end devices and your server. But keep in mind, it says here that the settings are generated on the client side of the browser, but you never know. Whoever owns this website maybe also, you know, keeping a copy of the keys and the settings <laughs> that you're generating. But anyway, let's get to it. So we have a random seed here. 
can be anything. You know, you can join your own. Enter some random characters in here. We have our standard listing port. We're doing this for three clients. Doesn't really matter. It could be 50 clients if you need it for 50 clients, but we're going to keep it at 10 clients or five clients because we're only going to use one client. Uh, as for IP address that you're using for the um, for the network or for the VPN network, it's up to you what you want to use. Uh, I like to keep my um, VPN uh, network uh, IP range starting with a 10. Uh, as for allow clients, I want to allow access to the router itself for the DNS server. So I'm defining this here with the, with the mask 32. And then obviously I want to have access to the whole network on this side, as I described earlier. So I'm defining this as here. And obviously here you want to put, you want to enter the host name of your DNS system. If you have a, like a host name on your router, but most cases, most people don't. So you'll have to enter the public IP address of your router. Once again, same thing as I described earlier. And then uh, we're entering the IP address for the DNS server of our WireGuard uh, interface. Here you'll have some fields, you can just delete them. You don't actually need them. Make sure you enable use pre-shared key for enhanced security. And after that, just hit the generate config file. You get the config file here. You can you know save this as a PDF file. And uh, we're interested in the server portion and, and just the first client. So, so we're going to take our pre-shared key. So this right here is for the server, but this whole thing right here is specifically for the tunnel. So if we're going to take this pre-shared key. We're going to paste it in here. Also, I like to give really descriptive names when it comes to my IT infrastructure. Port number, we're keeping it the same, so no need to enter it. It will auto-config. Uh, we're not going to do anything with uh, interface assignment. We are going to be doing things with the firewall rules later on. As for interface, as I talked earlier, this is the interface I want to I wanna use for this particular VPN tunnel or IP address. Make sure you select 24-bit. Once again, you can give another descriptive name here, admins. You can also add additional uh, interface interfaces, but that's kind of off topic. And that's basically it. You want to hit the safe tunnel. Obviously, you're going to get an option that the tunnel or the wire guard is not running because the service is still disabled. The next thing I'm going to do is add a peer. We have no peers here. Obviously, there's multiple ways you can approach this. I'm basically going to hit add peer on the tunnel. So it takes me directly to add peer, enables the peer for me. Select the right tunnel, make sure you have the right tunnel selected. Description name, I'm, I'm just going to put tech1. I'm going to keep dynamic enabled because this is a mobile client. As again, if this was a router, I would obviously disable this option and reconfigure it. But in this tutorial, we are doing mobile clients, also known as road warriors. Keep alive, not, no need to enable it. Once again, mobile client. Now, public key. We'll go back here, and here is our public key. We're going to take the public key. This is our first client or peer. Enter the public key. Then we're going to take the pre-shared key. Also copy and paste it. Enter our pre-shared key. And our allowed IP address, or basically the IP address for this client. We're going to enter it in here. Select 32. Actually, it selects 32 automatically the moment you enter and you press tab, it selects 32 automatically. Once again, you can give a descriptive name right here. It doesn't really matter. And uh, once again, you can add additional IP addresses if you really need to. But once again, it's kind of off topic here. And uh, hit Save Peer. I'm going to ignore that. So that is finished. We have our peer. Now, the next thing we're going to do is enable WireGuard. Going to give a few seconds. It takes some time to get the message here. WireGuard is enabled. And also I have a status window. We can actually see our WireGuard tunnel is running. We have no peers. If I click to show more peers, it never had a handshake. It never connected it. We have zero transfer. Here is our peers IP address. So the next two things or three things, depending on how you count it, we need to add a firewall rule, really important. So basically the firewall rule is we opening, we are opening a port on the one interface allowing uh, more remote users to connect 
to our WireGuard service that is running on the PFSense box. So WireGuard uses UDP, first of all. We are allowing a connection to come in from any interfaces, and we want a connection to go to the one address. And I don't have the port name open here, so I'm going to cheat a little bit. I'm going to go to WireGuard here. I'm going to select the port and enter the destination port right here. So this is pretty basic firewall rule. We can also go advanced, filter out source IP addresses if we want to allow specific systems on the internet side to connect to our router. But once again, that's kind of off topic here. So here's our first uh, when rule. I'm, go I'm just going to read it one more time. Basically, it shows us how much data has been transferred. It shows us the protocol version 4. It's a UTP. Any source, any, any source port, that's what the asterisk means. Destination is one address, and the destination port is this port, and it could be any gateway. But once again, kind of off topic here, I'm going here a little bit. Next thing we need to add is two rules for the wire guard. We're going to add a first rule. It's, we're going to allow any protocol. We're going to allow a single network. We're going to enter the new interface we just made earlier. So this basically tells the firewall any system on this network can have access only oops only to this particular address it's its own interface so the reason we're doing this is to allow access for any system on this network to have access to the dns server that is going to be running on this interface so i'm, I'm just going to do this on topology here so we're allowing this phone to have access to the, to the PFSense, specifically on that interface I just added here. The second rule we're going to add below, once again, it's going to be any protocol. Uh, it's going to be the same network again, 24-bit. And we are allowing access to the LAN network at this point. Um, you kind of want to, you know, specify what systems you want you want to have access. You don't want to kind of open the doors for everybody, but I'm keeping this simple tutorial, so I'm just telling the firewall any systems or hosts or anything on this network can have access to this subnet from any source destination port in any, any basically it's it's a it's a wide open door basically. That's what I'm trying to say. Once again, if you know how the firewall rules work on PFSense, I highly recommend to fine tune the firewall rules depending how you need them for your application. So we're basically finished at this point. We are finished. Uh, you can start connecting and that's basically it. Okay, so we're gonna open a WireGuard. Obviously, I'm gonna show you which one to install. Obviously, you wanna search for, for WireGuard and you wanna install specifically this one. Developer are WireGuard Developing Group, so that's the particular one you want to install. There may be other malicious WireGuards versions, but you want to use the legitimate version. So we're going to go to add, and we have three options. We can do it from a file, scan a QR code, or create, create one from scratch. But we're going to do scan QR code. So we're going to scan the QR code that quickly. We're going to name this tunnel on our, on our phone. We're going to create a tunnel tunnel is basically already created. I'm going to turn on the tunnel. I can go into the tunnel settings. The bottom here you can see are, are right now it showed up some traffic because this is a silent tunnel or passive tunnel I guess you can call it. It does not keep the connection all the time. It only creates a connection when you're requesting services from the DNS or requesting services from that 192 subnet on your, on your network basically. So I'm going to open up ping tools here and I'm going to ping to my WireGuard interface and you can actually see it's pinging. I'm getting response. I can also ping the other subnet that I need to have access to. So I'm going to ping the router. You can see it's responding to ping. I'm going to stop it. I'm going to open up a browser here too. And I'm going to enter the IP address of that router. And I'm going to enter admin, admin, 
I'm gonna log in. Here we are. And I'm gonna go go to VPN tunnel here, wire guard, status. And here you can see I'm gonna here you can see a handshake connection. If I scroll down to the side, you can see some packets have been transferred between the between these users, between the user and the server. So you can clearly see I'm viewing the same router I was configuring the tunnel on it. And uh, same on a computer. If I click status, show more, or show peers, I can see the, the peer here. Same thing, if I go to rules, I can see there's traffic been transferred on the when rule. And if I go to the wire guard rule, I can see there's traffic been transferred on these two rules for pinging and access to the uh, LAN subnet. So yeah, basically this is how you do it. It's pretty straightforward when you know how to do it. And uh, yeah, thank you for watching, I guess. Have fun. If you have any questions, I can probably answer them in the comments below because the channel is still fresh, not a lot of traffic on it. So enjoy your new VPN tunnel.